All right, and welcome back to working with Excel. We're going to be focusing on Chapter 7, which is uh, identifying and uh, working with some specialized functions. Going through the PowerPoint slide, we're going to look at some date functions, uh, how to calculate uh, days and years between given dates. Uh, we're going to look at how to extract day and month and year from a given uh, date field. Uh, and we're also going to look at a couple of additional date functions that display dates in the future or past. Uh, given a specified uh, number of months uh, in comparison against the date field. And then we're going to also look at uh, the EO month function, which is going to center on uh, displaying the last month for a specified number of month, months from a date field. In addition to the, the date functions, we're going to look at uh, nested functions, and that's basically an embedded function within the, the uh, argument of another function. Um, and we're going to be looking at how to use that uh, if function. Uh, and then we're also going to look at some, some other nested functions that are common, commonly used in Excel. Uh, we're going to look at the and, or, and not function to do some, some comparisons and return either a true false value based off of, um, based off of conditions that are met or not met. In addition to, uh, the, in addition to uh, those functions, we're going to look at some advanced lookup functions. Uh, we're going to look at an index function which returns the value at a given uh, specified intersection of a row or a column in a range. <clears throat> and then we're going to look at the match function which searches a range for a particular value and then returns that, that relative position within the, uh, um, within the range. So let's go ahead and go to our, uh, our worksheet uh, that we've created for class. Uh, essentially what uh, I have here is I have a couple of date ranges. Uh, we have some some functions that we're going to use here. If you use the days function, uh, it requires two arguments. It's going to require the end date and the start date uh, in that particular order. And the reason why is because we're doing a, uh, a difference between two dates. And just like most subtraction uh, calculations and computations, you want to subtract the smaller number from the larger number, so it requires the end date first and the start date. So in this particular function, it's going to calculate the number of days in between those two dates and give us 669. The year frac function, again, takes those two dates, and it does, a com it does a comparison of how many years occur in between those two dates, and it gives it in a decimal format. We also have some functions that kind of extract some of the day, the actual data in the in the date field. So if you're looking to pull the day within a uh, a, a specific date in a in a field, um, you would use the day function. And again, it's going to return 31 because we're looking at B2 here, which has October 31st. Again, looking at the same date, if we use the month function. It's going to extract uh, 10 or the month of October, and then same thing for the year. A couple of uh, additional functions here dealing with dates. We have the e-date and the EO month date. Uh, and essentially the e-date uh, gives us uh, kind of a glimpse at a, a calculation of based off of a given date, you can specify the number of months uh, to look in the future or the past and then return that date. So in this particular, uh, in this particular function, uh, we have, we're look, again, we're looking at B2 and we're looking four months into the future. If I wanted to change that up and look four months into the past, I would go ahead and put a negative there and click enter. And again, it would go ahead and put four months from the 31st of October, which is the 30th of, of June for 2017. Uh, one thing to note in here, make sure that when you use the EO e date and EO month that you apply a date format, um, because you will notice once you use that function, um, it actually gives a very long number in there. Uh, so applying the date, the date uh, format will go ahead and uh, collect that, put it in an actual date format. The EO month, again, uh, very similar to the E date. Uh, it does a comparison uh, against a specific date field, um, and it adds however many months that you uh, go ahead and specify. So we're looking six months into the future, and for this particular uh, function, the EO month looks at the last day of that month that you're specifying. Uh, so again, uh, if we were looking at the middle of the month and doing six months out from there using the EO month, it would then 
goes six months out, and then it would put the end of the month for that return value. So those are some really uh, useful Excel date functions that you can use. Um, next, we're going to look into some nested functions. Uh, and nested functions, again, are basically a function within a function that reside in the argument. In this particular case, I've got a, um, a an if function nested within another if function. So I've got my logical test here, which is this first value if true. And then for my value of false, I'm doing another comparison here because I have three values that I need to kind of um, uh, reference or I need to compare against because I'm looking at a higher date for my employees and then determining the percentage that they uh, that they get based off of their their salary and then their higher date uh, falls. So for this particular instance, I'm looking to see um, and I'm putting my my nested function within the value of false. Um, and the, the, the best way that I can recommend in, in creating and computing a nested function is work from the inside out. So in this particular instance, we're going to look to see now if the individual's hire date, so we're looking at CA, if that is greater than B4, we know for a fact that he's going to get 5%. No problem. No question in that. However, if that's not true, we need to look to see in comparison to the the other two dates to see where his high, that individual this individual's higher date falls in order to apply the correct percentage. So that's why our nested function here is in the value of false. So I've got again my comparison here, which we're going to check and see is his is his uh, or is this individual's higher date before the first of uh, before the first of, of uh, 2012. If that's the case, then it's going to get 7%. Now, once we return that value, we do the comparison of our outer nested function, or outer function, and we will find that this individual gets a 7% commission based off of their, uh, based off of their higher date. Once you've constructed your function, then you can go ahead and do the autofill and apply that down. So that's a nested function, and again, we'll cover this more in class. Uh, a couple of other functions I want to kind of uh, look at for comparison purposes. We have the AND function, we have the OR function, and we have the NOT function. Uh, those are commonly used as nested functions as well. So for the AND function, all conditions must be, uh, be met in order for that for that to return a true statement or a true for it to return true. Uh, so for this particular word we're doing a comparison to see if the person's job title is a manager and if they have a salary greater than eighty thousand dollars. No job manager here, no greater than eighty thousand dollars, so that's false. Same thing for the following three. Even though one condition's met here for Smith, the other condition is not. Okay, the the uh, salary is not greater than eighty thousand dollars. We go all the way down to the bottom and we finally found uh, an instance where the individual is a manager and has a salary greater than eighty thousand dollars. So it returns true. For an AND function, all criteria must be met. For the OR function, the OR function only requires requires any. So a minimum of one condition must be met for it to return true. So no manager here. But the individual has a salary less than eighty thousand dollars, so that returns true. We have a manager here, and the fact that his that this individual's salary is less than eighty thousand dollars, we have both of those conditions that are met. Only one is required, so it's still true. Go all the way down to uh, employee Johnson, and if you look, it's not a manager. He or she is not a manager, and they do not have a, a salary of less than eighty thousand dollars. Neither one of those conditions are met, so that returns false. Okay, so for the OR function, only one condition needs to be met. Then we have our final comparison, our final nested function that we're going to be working with. It's called the NOT function. Uh, and think of it as in terms of um, kind of an opposite day. Uh, so we're looking to see, based off of the job title, is this person not a manager? So Williams is not a manager. That is true. Okay. We go to Smith. Smith is Smith not a manager? No, nope, Smith is a manager. If, if Smith were, were not a manager, we would return true. So opposite day, 
and return false. And again, we do the comparison all the way down until we, until we work through all of our values. So again, the not, the not function does a comparison to see whether or not the condition is met and returns true or false, given uh, the nature of, of whether or not that condition is, is true based off of the, uh, the structure of the function or false based off of the opposite of that. And finally, one, one, uh, two other uh, quick functions. We're going to look at the index function. The index function looks within a specific range. It's going to give a row position and a column position. So we have a range here, row 1 in the range, row 2 in the range, row 3 in the range, row 4 in the range, and we want column 1, so 84, 50, 555 should be what we get returned. And that's what we get. For the match function, you have a specific lookup value, and our lookup value here is specified in B17. You have your range specified, so we're looking in the bonus field, and we're wanting an exact match. So that's what that zero identifies as an exact match. So we're looking for that, and it returns position one, two, three, and four, based off of the index in that particular range. So those are some useful functions. Uh, for dates, the nested functions, and um, also for uh, doing some advanced um, lookup functions with indexes and matches.